Okay, we're just about ready to start. Now the first step in our skates is going to be to add the background texture. And I'm going to do that with Margot's Mud. I like Margot's Mud. If it's a texture paste and it air dries, it has no smell. And what I like about it is it dries really hard as a rock and it doesn't flake off later on because we're gonna be dry brushing over these the textures so we don't want it to flake. So I'm gonna put my finished skates aside and we're gonna start with the tall skate. And what I decided for texture on that is a piece of lace. I found a really pretty piece of lace and we're going to mud right through there. And I'm going to start by just masking off where the skate meets the blade on each of them. Because that will just help keep it a little bit neater. So we do that. And then we're going to place our lace over the skate. And kind of anchor it into place. Once you start mudding, it will stick pretty well where you have it. I'm going to tape right over there where I taped before just to hold it kind of steady. And now make sure your mud is nice and creamy and wet a little bit. Now mine tends, it dries out if you don't use it for a while. So what I do before I put the lid on is I spritz it with a little water and let water sit on top of it. Not a lot. And I also date the lids from when I bought the mud because then I could use the oldest one first. And I'll know because I have several jars. So what I'm going to do is load some mud on the back of my trowel and then just start to mortar it in. It's kind of like laying bricks. And you can see as I put it on, you don't want the lace to move. You don't have to worry too much about the eyelets, the eye holes for the laces, but we'll get we'll take care of them. I'll show you in a minute. And once you start to put the mud down, it sticks the lace into place nicely so it doesn't move. Start at the bottom where you taped and just continue up. Now you don't want it too thick because we're going to pull the lace off, but you want it thick enough where there's going to be a nice design to show. I guess we'll go this way. Now you could use any kind of lace. You could find really pretty hip patterns with florals or, you know, it opens up a, a whole world of designs for you. And it's very cheap. And actually, when I, when I did the first set for the sample on these, I just rinsed out the lace when I was done and I was able to reuse it. So it doesn't mean you have to throw it out. You just put it in water right away and rinse it out and squeeze it out and let it dry and you're good to go because you'll be doing both sides of the skates too and you need to let one side dry it before you could do the next obviously so we'll finish up here see how quick this is kind of get to the edge but we'll have trim over there you don't have to have too much on the edges and make sure it's good and even And this is the fun part. Just really gently peel it off. Yeah. Now I'm going to put this over here for a minute. And now I want to caution you when it's you have to work with this when it's wet because it's going to be a lot harder if you wait till it dries. And what I want to do next is open up the holes again. Use a clean paper towel. 
You just kind of scoop them out with your trowel. This way you'll have nice clean edges. Kitty sneezed. The kitty's always got to get involved when I record. And um, a word of caution is to clean up your tools and everything while the mud is wet because once it dries, it's going to be really difficult to do because it likes to stick really well on everything. So and make sure you use, if you're, if you're washing it in a sink or that, use a lot of water so it, you don't get clumps of it going down your sink. I go along the edges too like that and pull that little bit of excess off and then we take our tape and that's one and two. Now see how easy? Alrighty, now we're ready to do the short skate and on that one I'm going to use the stencil by Deco Art, and it's designed by Tracy Moore, and I liked it because it had these little fan designs in it. They look kind of old-fashioned. And to do the stencil, it's kind of the same thing. It has a little bit different feel to it, though, because the plastic can move around a little more. And what I did first was kind of move it around and see um, where I'm going to get the most of the little motifs to show. And I think somewhere around there would be nice. Now on, the, on this skate as well, we're not going to do the heel here. So we don't have to worry about that. It's a little bit easier to control. I'm going to put a piece of tape there just because it can go through the stencil and hold it into place better. And I'll tape over here too. And maybe there. We want it kind of firm where it's not going to move around too much because we're going to be using the, the palette knife on it. And once again, I like using the back of the knife because it, it's just easier to control. This time we're going to put less of the mud on and I'm going to start in a blank area and kind of scrape towards the stencil lightly. Now you see there's going to be excess areas like the toe and that. And we'll clean that up later. And reload. Same thing here. want to get all the way to the edge and you can avoid the, the eyelet holes if possible. It's not always possible but we'll clean them out like we did on the other skate and they'll be fine. So work your way up. Again you don't need a lot of mud. Now see this, we're going to go over the eyelet holes because the design goes all the way to the edge. And even though the laces will kind of hide that, you want it to be done. A complete design anyway. Move up here. Back. And I'm not putting a lot of pressure. There might be a couple little wrinkles in there, but that's okay. It doesn't have to be perfect because you won't even notice it when it's done. There we go. And that little bit in the front. Kind of check it and kind of smooth them out like if you had a wrinkle like there. You don't want a big wrinkle like that. You want to kind of pull it 
even when it's all done. That looks good. And then once again, I turn and very gently lift. Now I use painter's tape, which holds good and it'll come off pretty easy. I'm just going to set this on the side. Clean my palette knife and then these areas, we want to get those off right away. We don't want to let it dry like that because it won't sand easily. It'll sand, but it's, it's not easy to do, so we want to get our edges pretty good. Here it is, a little drip. Some drips under here. Just take the edge of the knife and hold it. Hold it against and scrape. And same thing with the eyelets. You want to clean them out. There isn't as much mess on this one. Sorry, I got my froggy voice on today. Okay, and you could take, if there's, if you want, if there's anything on the sides, you could take a little damp paper towel while it's wet and wipe those away. And they'll be good. They won't even show. And like that. I don't know if that was a dot that gets smeared. So, and remember to close up your mud right away. Wipe down the edge. I'm not at the sink, but you want to do that too. So now we're going to just leave these dry, leave them a good couple hours, I would, before I moved on because we're going to be dry brushing and that over them and you want them completely dry. So I'll come back, I'll do the other sides, they're done the same way, and then we'll go from there. Okay? Thank you. Okay, we're back now, and our mud is dried on both of our skates. I did both sides. This one was done with this with the um, lace overlay, and this one I used the stencil overlay. And I let them dry a couple hours at least, and you can see it, it's quite hard on there. It's not going to pick off or flake off. And I'm going to paint the blue skate with Whispering Turquoise. By deco art and we'll do proto skirt pink for the base coat on the pink skate and I'm gonna put that on its side right now and we'll start on our blue skate now for base coating this since it's textured I like to use a deerfoot stippler brush because it has stiffer bristles and it'll get in all those cracks and I'm also going to use um, the bubble palette because since I have so much paint to put down for the base coat it's nice to keep it into little I usually use a flat wet palette but I'm going to use the bubble palette for I use it for big stuff like that so I dampened my brush just to get it a little bit moist and it's really easy we're just gonna we're gonna base it when we get to these areas, I use a flat or an angled brush just to keep them neat. That's where the blade's going to come up on it. And on the blue skate, I painted the heel blue as well as the skate body. So let me get that. I need a little more paint. MDF sucks it up like a sponge. So I'll do that with a flat brush or angle. And I'm also going to get inside this area. I don't know if you could see what I'm doing. But just to get those edges that join the blade edges. 
gives you a better edge if you use a flat brush like this. I need a little water on this too. These are all your fussy areas and then after you get these done, everything else should go pretty quick. Now I'm going to do the silver um, blade of the skate last because that way if we get any little spots or anything like that on them, it'll be easy to cover. Now you could also, which I should have showed you, put a piece of paper or something to, to block that if you want, but it won't matter much. And what I'll do first is the edges, I think. Because then I can blend the sides easier. And then I always start in the tightest areas first, which is underneath the boot. I need more paint, it looks like. There we go. I love this color. This is really pretty. And you could see why I'm using a, a stiffer brush because it's easier to scrub in and it fills it fills it much nicer. I'll use this brush for her. that side. And then we're also going to want to paint the areas in here. Can't get it in there. Where the laces will go. And you can see I didn't get all of my mud out there. But I'll get it later. I'll pick it or else I can. you can run it through the drill press if you have it too. And drill it out. Do the eyelid parts first. And then we'll go back to base coating. And you see I'm kind of like scrubbing around the mud because I want it to be covered fully. And like I said, that's why I like the mud so much is because it doesn't flake off or make a mess. And you might not be able to see it really well now, but um, once it dries and once we dry brush it, it'll really make the design come up and it'll look really nice. More paint again. I'm used to painting little things, so I tend to not put enough paint in my palette because I don't like wasting it. There we go. And then come around your sides. Now you could do these skates on thin wood too, like eighth inch birch or cutouts like that, and they'd be cool. You could do them smaller, like ornaments. If you find a small stencil, but that's where the lace comes in because the design is so little. It'll look nice on any size, really. I know this isn't very exciting to watch me base coat, probably. But some of you that don't base coat or are newer to painting will appreciate it, I guess. We all do things in our own way. And it's probably nice, that's the nice thing about the art play day classes, is you get to see so many teachers and so many ways of doing things. You know, I always tell people that, that there's more than one way to do things. 
more than one correct way, I guess I should say. Because we all find the way to do things that we're most comfortable with. And just because one person does it one way doesn't mean we all have to. So we're going to base coat that. And scrub it into the design. And it depends how far you want to go with your laces or lace holes. I mean, you, you could get all the way in there if you want to get a longer brush that'll really, you know, get to the mill of however thick your wood is, but I don't know. I don't find it to be absolutely necessary. Okay, and kind of get, so there's no brush strokes. Make sure your edges are kind of neat. That there's no ripples. And that looks pretty good. We're going to let that dry. And I'm going to do the pink one. And we're going to do it the same way. We'll stand that up until it dries. Okay, I base coated my pink with Poodle Skirt Pink, and I left the heel because I'm going to do that in white. I thought that the pink skate looked better with the white heel. It didn't look so on purpose that way. And the paint is dry, and I fixed my little eyelets there. I dug out that little bit of mud. So now the next thing we're going to do is dry brush to get the cool texture. And I'm going to do one side of the skate in a, a clean Victorian look with light coloring and shimmer, of course, sparkles on there. And the other side of the skate, we're going to antique. So we'll start out, they both start out the same way, so you can still kind of decide which way you want to go on them. And all we're going to do is dry brush on them to get the texture to come up. And it's really fast and fun. This is where the fun starts because it's really cool to see the design come to be. So I am using whitewash, but you could use any white. They're so close. And I'm going to use my half inch stippler brush or any stiff brush that you like. And load up a little paint, no water, and wipe it on a paper towel to work it up. And then we're going to just start by very lightly brushing on the design area. You don't want too much paint at once. You want the brush almost dry where you're almost just very light pressure. You're almost like tickling it. Because if you push too hard, you'll have a white blob there. And if you notice you have too much paint, then by all means go back to the paper towel and get rid of more of it. And you'll see how this gradually comes up. There's our design. There's our next motif there. And see when you start to brush, you can't see it hardly at all. It doesn't mean you need more paint, it just means you need to take your time with it because you want it to look subtle and nice. You'll notice how few times I'm going to reload my brush throughout this whole process. Kind of get each of the, each of the motifs, there's a little brush here in there, there we go, pick it out. Turn your piece, of course, to make it easier for you to see. And it's cool, as if by magic the little designs come up.
pictures of that there. Here's the top of one design where we left off, so you want to get that too. I'm not going to do any on the heel. That'll be shaded. will be shaded on the antique side. See how subtle and nice. Now see, I'm running low. I'm going to go a little bit more paint. And then again, start with a real light touch. Anytime you go back after loading the paint, be very cautious that you don't have too much on at once. Because you don't want to get a blob of paint in there. And there's a little motif here. You can't really hardly see it until I start brushing. And it's up to you how pronounced you want it. How dark of paint you want to put on it. Or light of paint. I guess we're using white. I want mine to be subtle but to show. You want it to show. It's going to look like almost like old fashioned wallpaper. And I think I need a little more up there. Kind of look at the piece. See where I could use a little more. And that one looks pretty good. There's a dot here. Okay, and we do the other side the same. I'll show you again. I'm going to load the brush, take almost all of it off. Use a good quality paper towel for this too because you don't want crumbs. I like those shop rags, but I like them in white because I'm always afraid the blue dye is going to come off. Like especially now when I'm using white paint. So I'll start here. I'm kind of holding the brush on the on the side. I find that does well when you have texture like this. Because it kind of catches the paint on the edges of the texture. And you don't have to push down as hard. It kind of skips over the design or the, the part in the middle. And it gives a really nice look to it. And I tur I'm turning my brush so I get all different edges or all the, all the sides on it before I reload. that showing up good on the video. One there in front. Okay. Those are the blue that's the blue skate. And now the next one will be our pink that aside and it's really the same thing since the pink has an all-over design I'm gonna of course do the whole thing See, it's a little much when it comes up there quickly you want to back off a little and again I'm going on the side And you'll see the pretty lace pattern come up. And it also softens the pink color a lot. Because this is quite a bright 
intense pink, but if I used a lighter pink, you wouldn't see the design at all. So it's kind of doing your shading with the texture. And I went a little heavier on this, on the pink skate with the white. See how I'm barely touching it and I'm holding my brush on the side and I keep turning my brush so a fresh side comes up. And try to get it as even as possible. Pretty nice though. Think of all the different laces you could use, and you could use this on jars or boxes. You could do this just about anything. Or on a border would make a nice like a framing for a piece. If you just do say tape off the inch around your board for edges, you could make a nice pretty lace border. And then, I won't show you the other side because it's the same. I'm sure you get it. But what I'm doing on the edges is going to dry brush a little bit too. Just to make it look a little softer. It'll blend it in a little more. This is why we do the, the blade of the skate last, because sometimes you might get a little paint when you're wildly dry brushing like I am. On the top. Now I wanted to show you one little, one last thing at this step. If you get a little bit too much there, like a blotch, instead of trying to wipe it off, what you can do is rinse your brush out. Any of these, even on the front or the, the front of the skates too, or the sides, whatever. And you take your base coat color, make sure your brush is pretty dry, and load you, your brush with a base coat and you can tone it down. See like here's a little bright. I could just tone it down. You could play with it like that. So we're going to do both our skates, both sides of both skates and then let them dry for a little bit. And our next step will be putting the crackle on to antique blue skate. So we'll be back in a bit. All right, with both of our skates dry brushed and dry, we're going to move ahead to the, putting on the crackle on the blue skate. I didn't crackle the pink skate because I thought the design was busy enough and I don't think a crackle would have really showed up well on it. So we're going to leave the pink skate as is for now. And I'm going to use DecoArt's One Step Crackle Finish. I chose this product over the Weathered Wood because the One Step Crackle gives a very fine crackle and the weather wood is more of a middle layer you put a dark base coat you put the crackle down and then you put a lighter top coat and it peels back and you could see the dark cracks in between and it just gives a too harsh or too big of a crack so I went with the one step because it gives a fine crackle finish and it looks like porcelain almost and what you do, you, you put your paint down 
you lay a coat of the one step and allow it to dry and it cracks and then you wash it with a darker color and that fills in the little cracks. You can wipe it back or you can add a wash. You can do it either way. I'll show you how when, when we get to that step. And it gives a very fine look, almost like porcelain. And I like it. It's nice for things like lettering. If you just want the letters to crack, you, you can control it because you paint it just on the area you want crackled. So I'm going to put that away and we're going to start applying the crackle. It's kind of gel-like. It's a clear gel and it's a little bit thick. So we want to put a, a nice even semi-thick coat. You don't want it too thick. And in order to do that I'm using a flat brush, a three-quarter inch flat brush, and I'm dampening the brush and blotting it. Because if I don't do that it's going to drag too much. You'll feel the crackle dragging. And load your brush nice, nice amount. And I'm going to go side to side. So for the most part I'm going to lay on the crackle, finish um, crackle medium side to side. And you can see I have the brush almost parallel to the surface. I want to be sure to get in all that, put a thick enough coat because we have this texture going on here. We want to get it into all the cracked areas there. And I'm kind of just patting when I get over the eyelet holes. Same as I get to the edges. When I first lay the brush, I don't lay it at the edge and pull, or I'd have a big roll of it here. So I'm, I'm going to start here and work my way back, kind of pat and pull. And you don't want to overwork this. It's going to tack up pretty quickly. So you don't want to keep moving it around or you're going to lose your effects. But you get a little time with it. It's not like it's not like the other one dries really quick, the weathered wood. And see there's thicker areas here that I'm just kind of pulling across. And then I pat when I get to the end. Now for the blue boot, it has a blue heel. And I'm going to go over that and again I'm starting in the middle and working that way. And then I'm just going to go backwards and pat. You don't want to edge of crackle. This is really a fast little process to do. And the kitties are fighting in the background. There's some growling. Because they always got to get involved on my videos in some way. They don't fight often really. Just because I'm talking Anyway, so it's about done. thing is now to leave it. I would leave it a good half hour, 45 minutes or more, maybe even a couple hours. You could do this before you go to bed too, and it would be good. So I'm going to put that skate aside, and I think now is a good time to paint the heel in white on the pink skate. So I'm going to rinse my brush. Use the same brush. Once again, use the whitewash. And we're just going to base that heel in. Go up to the. Again, I start a little back and then I kind of snug up to the. the seam there. Same here. Just imagine the little line that's there for the blade. And as we did before, we want to wrap the heel on the bottom. To go up to the blade and right there. There's a hair in there. I love when that happens. And this should give nobody problems. You all know how to base coat. 
but might as well do this while the other piece is drying. Make sure you don't have any drips. This dry flake, there we go. You could do two coats on this. It's not going to hurt it. So you could still see a little of the dark MDF through it. And I might need a smaller brush to get that last little bit. We'll try. I'll touch that up off the screen. Could use a little brush to get that last little. I don't have one here. Okay. Make sure you don't get any folds like that. I'm going to blend it. There we go. And while you're at it, you could base coat your snowflakes. Each skate has three snowflakes. And I would do two coats. I do the edges first. I didn't want to do that on screen because it's just base coating. But do that in the white too. Okay. And we'll be back when our crackle dries. And we'll go on to the antiquing step. Okay, I'm back. And our crackle is dried and crackled. It's only really been about an hour and a half or so since I left you, so it didn't take that long. And I don't know if you can see it but it's crackle it's very slightly tacky but it's not like the other crackle that feels sticky this one shouldn't and I remembered to do one side of the snowflakes too of one set because we want our antique snowflakes to also be a little bit antiqued and have that little crackle effect so I just did the same. I used the, um, the Deerfoot brush when there's something this intricate and I just tapped it on. I tapped the crackle on and let it dry. So we're good to go on that. And now we're going to do the antiquing on just one side of the boot. You can do both, of course, if, if that's what you want to do for yours. I'm just doing one side so I could show the finishing process on both sides. Um, we're going to antique it with Brassiana acrylic by doing floats and kind of a wash on it. And I'm going to use a wide angle brush. This is a 5 8 inch. And just take a little bit of paint and water and kind of blend it on my palette going to be a very washy look to it. And I'll start on the heel. And what I'm going to do at first is float around the edge a little bit, like you would normally float. You don't want too much water in it, just a little. And as I'm floating, kind of a wide float. I'm going to keep blending. But I want it to look old, so I'm going to leave some color on there. It's pulling off there right now because it's still wet. I'll come back around and do that. And for those of you who are new to floating, I like using angular shaders. And just tip Dip the tip of the brush into the paint and then blend it on your palette a little so it, the color actually goes about halfway up the brush. And your brush needs to be wet for that or damp. Not wet wet, but wet enough to move the paint. And what it does is it has a concentration of paint on one side and it fades out. 
and learning to float on the edge is probably the easiest way to learn. I used to um, teach on popsicle sticks because you're supposed to go perpendicular to what you want to float and it kind of gets a good idea in everybody's head of the process. So see I'm blending so the color is about halfway up the brush and then it, I'm taking short choppy strokes at first and then I blend them in. It doesn't have to be an all-in-one kind of deal. You know, a lot of people think it's just one sweep, and really that's not the case. And as I'm floating on the edge, you could see the cracks that were left from the crackle. I hope you can see them. We'll see more in a minute when I'm done with this. So we want to go around our skate. If our brush gets dry, we want to add a little more water and then I tap it on the paper towel. You see when I blot it, there's a lot of color on one side and it fades to almost nothing. That's what you want. You don't want to wipe it on the paper towel because the color would be distributed throughout the brush then and that's kind of going to defeat the purpose of floating. So you just lean it to pull out the excess moisture. And go around. And this is a very loose and quick kind of process. Usually by the time you get back to the heel it's pretty much dry. Where you started so you won't be pulling that paint off again so you could do a little extra there. Touch it up where it needs. Maybe a little more here in front just to play with it. So that's the blue boot. Now we're also going to um, antique one of the pink boots. So I'm going to do the same thing. And this time I'm going to antique around the heel too because you don't want a bright white heel. And the rest of the boot is going to be brown or antiqued. And the same thing now. You'll use a little more paint than normal than I, I would do anyway with floating with this because the texture in it. You'll see it gets caught on the texture, but already it's starting to look nice and old. And it's toning down that bright pink and white. And you try not to pull off on your corners. I kind of leave it heavy in the corner and kind of pat and move on. Or else you can do opposite sides and then come back and wait for it to dry. It dries pretty quick. So it's only a couple minutes. And just go around the boot. under and here's where we don't want to pull it off where we started so we're kind of going to pat and play with that one a little bit and we need to do this seam too so I'm going to go across here as well and then when that's dry I'll go on the other side and do it face-to-face -face float. Okay, so that's the outsides. So it's kind of good to do a couple at a time because it gives you a chance to go back and forth a little more and lets everything dry. And I'm also, on the blue boot, going to go across the heel here. Because we, Even though we didn't paint that heel white, we want a separation between the main part of the boot and the heel. And now since this is dry already, I can go right away on the other side. Okay, I'll let that dry a minute and I'm going to do the snowflakes. And for those, I think I'll use the, the deer foot again. And I'm going to dampen that, pick up a little paint. 
and kind of just almost dry brush, but not really. We're just kind of washing it a little. I just want to tone it down and make it a little bit more brown so it doesn't look so fresh and new. You kind of use your own, you know, taste with this. Just don't put thick paint on it. Have kind of a watery wash on it. We have a little bit too wet, so pull some off. Just to tone it down. It doesn't have a lot of crackle in it because of the way I put it on with a um, stippler. But it does have a little bit of texture. They're going to get sparkled anyway, so that'll be cool. It'll be fine. Now, for the rest of the boot, I'm going to, again, I think I'll use a stippler, though you could use the angle if you're more comfortable with it. And I'm going to water some down and make a wash. And kind of just go over it like that. age it. And now you saw one load did the whole skate and I'm going to wipe some back. Well, I wiped too much back there. I thought it was drying too fast. I'm going to wipe them back if there's too much. There we go. That's better. You don't want to wipe it all off. I thought it was a little grungy and a little dark. That kind of looks nice. That looks good like that. So I don't even have to wipe at that time. So Now for the crackled one, we're going to do the same thing. And this will be fun because you'll be able to see the cracks come up. So you want it you can see it's sitting on top of the crackle because the crackle's like a plastic almost. It's like a finished, shiny. So it's not going to really bond to it great, but it will get in all those cracks. And you want to put a decent amount in there so you can see the cracks come up. up here how the cracks are showing through. Put a little more. And you really kind of have to use your own judgment here as to how much pigment you want to add, how much color. You want it to fill in the cracks, so it's got to be kind of washy, so it can get in those cracks pretty good. And then, again, I'm going to just blot it very light. I don't want to take it all off. I'd like the hair to come off that's on there. Kind of blot it. Well, you could leave it if you want it really grungy, but see how, I hope you can see that the cracks are all filled in on the, it seems like the, um, where it was thicker on the motifs is where it cracked most, which really kind of looks cool. That looks really nice. I'll go one more time on there. You could do a couple layers of this. You could try your brush and just leave it. Like I said, you always get little hairs. I'm sure all of you with pets have the same issue. Okay, 
Oh, we don't want bubbles in there, really. So I'm going to pat those out. And there's our antique skate. This one I'm thinking could be a little bit darker. So I'm just using my dirty brush and giving it a little more of this color. not forget that I need to do the bottom of that line here. And you could always put a little more on the edges if you want. See this line disappeared a little because I didn't let it dry. I should have let it dry a little longer but since we were filming. So you can define that a little more, make your heel darker. I'll probably go over and do that in a minute. And that's the antiquing part of things. So the next step will be to come back and we're going to add, we're going to finish painting the blades and add some shimmer to the pieces, to the non-antique sides. Okay, we'll be back in a minute. I'm going to let that dry a bit. Okay, we're back and the antique part is dry and what I'm going to do next is show on the non-antique part. While this looks pretty, I wanted it to sparkle more because I like sparkles. And I'm going to use DecoArts Glamour Dust in Ice Crystals, which is a clear. And I'm going to use that for both skates. So I am going to put a generous amount in my palette. And I, I am going to use again my Deerfoot brush on that because with the texture I think it gets it in better and when I put the any of the glitter or the sparkle paints on when you brush it tends to move them all one direction or another so I like to tap it on more than anything. So I'm going to load it up and this is easy. Not, not too hard to do. And I do the heel as well. And of course, I didn't mention before, but with the antiquing, if you do the antique on both sides, you'll want to dry brush the edges with a little bit of the um, raw sienna. Because you don't want stark edges like that. But... I don't know if you could see the sparkles. It gives it, it'll take on the pink and it'll take on the blue really nice. If you get one DecoArt Glamour Dust, get the ice crystals because you can use it over any color and it'll look cool. Though I like having all of them because they're cool too. But. That's all we do. This is an easy step. It's quick. You could go two coats if you need to, but you probably shouldn't have to. It'll make a nice difference. It looks a little milky now, but when it dries, it'll look awesome. And same with the blue. I'm getting these little bits of my brush breaking off, but they come out easy. Follow along. Heel as well. I'm going to get to that. This step is pretty much self-explanatory. 
I think most of us had experience with sparkle. So we probably got this one down pretty good. Okay, so we got to let that dry. I do not sparkle the antique side because it's supposed to look grungy a little. So we're not going to do that. Oh, and we want to do our snowflakes too. But, oh, we're going to do those in craft twinkles. We want bigger sparkles on them. So scratch that. We're not going to do that now. We'll do that next step. Okay, and the next thing we will do while that is drying, or once it is dry, we're going to base coat our runners, our blades for our skates. So I think I'd be best to wait till this dries to show you that. So I'll be back in a minute. Okay, I think that our glamour dust has dried enough to move on. I don't know if you could see. The beautiful shine that it gave both the skates. As it dries, they get more shiny, which is cool. So our next step is going to be to paint the runners, the blades of the skates. And for that, I'm using Shimmering Silver Metallic by DecoArt. And I noticed, I mentioned this to Keith, that the, it seems very watery. But I've gotten, like, I thought maybe my batch went bad. But um, I've gotten like three of them over like the last five years, and they're all like that. So it must be something with the silver paint because I know their labels are different, so they're different lots and everything, but they just seem a little bit more watery. So you have to sometimes put two coats. I usually put two. And again, it's pretty straightforward, except we want to be neater on this because this is going to be the final painting. I'm going to start at the heel area and I have a smaller flat brush to get in these areas now because this, this time counts. We want it to look good. And the same thing here. Do my inside areas first. and get those lines done first. Once they're out of the way, everything else should be pretty easy to do. And it does seem to cover well, even though it's very thin. But I'll probably wind up putting two coats on. So this section will also be kind of, I guess, boring for you guys who know what you're doing. Because all I'm gonna do is paint these runners in solidly and you'll see both versions here there we go see now that the adjacent edges are done I'm going to switch to a bigger brush And you could use a flat. I'm using an angle shader because I have it here. This is a 5 8 And once again, I'm doing the inside first. And these edges, again, they're kind of like a sponge. They absorb a lot of paint, so you need to go generous on your paint and it will absorb in but see it is covering pretty nice so that's good if you do another um, coat it only has to be a quick one I always do the edges first because that way when they drip over like this then you can blend them 
You want your final blend to be on the, the part that you see the most. I do anyway. So here we go. And this part is easy. I'm wondering, I don't think I have enough tape. Make sure you don't get a drip on your edge. That looks pretty good. And let me get some more paint and we'll finish up. I, I apply this rather thick because it is a thinner paint. So you shouldn't get any, the good part about it being thinner is you're not going to get brush strokes really. It's very easy to smooth out as you can see. So it'll give you a nice shiny metallic look to it. You might have to touch up on the runner sides. Check your areas. That looks good. And I'll put that out of the way. And what I'm going to do... I'm not going to do the whole thing and show you that, but I'm going to show you a little trick. When I have a close area like this, I take a piece of paper or a paper towel and I put it in and hold it. Because that way, if you do happen to hit the opposite edge, I hope you can see that, then you're not going to get it on the other part and have to keep going back and forth and back and forth. It works with computer paper. It's probably even better than the paper towels because it's not absorbent. But I just had the paper towel here and I thought I'd show you that little trick. Because that's a tight area. It's kind of hard to get into without touching the other end. So you do that first. Like I said, I'll do the hard areas first, and then when you pull that out, your edge is good. So, I'll continue. Um, you don't need to watch me do this, um, and then I'll be right back again. Thanks. Okay, our ice skate blades are all dry. And everything's starting to come together nice. We're getting to the finish. So the next thing we're going to do is put a little shade on the, on the silver part that we just painted the blades. And I'm using Dazzling Metallic's Black Pearl for that. And the reason I want to use metallic is if I use just a flat black, it'll take away the shine. So we're going to do that. So I'll do this blade for you. And put my water there. It's a really pretty color for black. I feel like black. And again, I'm going to use a wider brush. I'm going to use a 5 8 angle shader. Dampen the brush and blot it. I just lay it on the paper towel and let the... Um, moisture get drawn from it. Dip the corner in, blend it on the palette. This again is like a loose float, so you don't have to be really fussy with it. And where I'm going to float, I'll start where the skates meet the boot. I'm only floating the upper edge of the blades, so that'll be our darkest float. I could probably do them both at once and skip around. And it'll let it dry a little faster. This will sharpen up the lines and make them look nice and crisp. And we might as well do both sides at once because this isn't going to be really wet. It'll just dry pretty quick. You can see when I, when I do my line again, I start a little back from the line. 
because if we do happen to have too much paint and get a ridge, then we can work our way towards the line, a little at a time. So we'll just continue that around. And you want to skip around with this while everything's drying so we don't keep pulling off what we just put on. Like that, it'll give it a little shape. I'll do the inside in a minute. Probably going a little darker than I have to, but that way you'll be able to see it. Racking the table like this. So same thing on this. And bring that down. And now we're going to do our curly cue. And I think that'll be easier if we start from the inside. So I'll start right there and kind of pull the float around. It's just a hint of a float. It's not really just a little bit to give it a little bit of interest and shape. Because we're going to be doing other things to the blades too. And you don't want to cover up all the silver. So just swipe it a little bit. And this is pretty good practice for floating. Cause as long as you keep it a little bit of wash, you're not going to mess things up. It just gives it some shape. I'll skip around back here. And then underneath. And it continue out the line that you left off on. Let's soften it. There you go. That side's done. Same here. And you're keeping your brush perpendicular to the line you're floating. So you turn the brush on your turns. Okay. So that one's done. Let's set it down for a minute and finish up this one. The inside edge. And same thing here. Looks like we pulled a little off there, so I'm going to go back over that. That looks pretty good. Okay, so I'll rinse my brush. Blot it. Turn that over. And now, the next thing we want to do is just these little wisps of white. And they're like, it's going to be free-handed. I'm going to need my whitewash again. And it'll look like ice on the bottom of the skates. this one. And you don't have to overdo this. We're just going to dampen your brush, just corner, blend it out, and then just kind of curve it out. A couple of little strokes. And 
You don't want them even like stripes. You want to make them kind of irregular. They don't show up a lot, but you can see them. And same here. We're going to go just towards the back from the front. They don't have to be the same length. Now keep the paint a little bit thick so you can, so it looks like snow. Just that. That looks great. And now our other skate. I think get the hang of the curve, you're good. And the last one. Almost too even. And we'll let that dry a minute. And then what we're going to do, that'll only take a minute to dry. I could probably even go on from there. Is we're going to take the silver craft twinkles. And I, I chose the craft twinkles because they're a little bit bigger than the glamour dust the sparkles in there and it's going to look a little more like ice. So for that one, I think I'm just going to take my deer foot again and just along the bottom of our skates, we're going to randomly sweep it up a little. It'll kind of go over the white that you just did, just a little, and it makes a really nice little touch for it. That's why your other your white doesn't have to be perfect either, because it really won't matter. Nobody's gonna really look at that. Kind of take it on the, the edge of the brush, more on the bottom, and sweep it up back from the front. And there we have it. So we're done with our painting portion of the project. And we're going to let these dry for a little bit. And then we're going to put, I'll show you. Oh, wait. No, we're not done. We have to do our snowflakes. I'm sorry. I forgot. And they're right in front of me. And what I chose to do, you could do what you like, I, of course. For the white snowflakes, which are going to go on the non-antiqued pieces. I used the silver craft twinkles and again a stippler brush and just tapped it because there's so many edges I don't worry about the edges with the sparkles they'll kind of get over the edges anyway your brush and now for the antique sparkles or the antique snowflakes we're going to use crystal which is a clear craft wrinkles because it's more subdued a little it gives it a nice little subdued look and it lets that antiquing show through so 
That's why earlier I told you um, the crackle didn't have to really crack a lot on that one. It just it makes it look uneven and older. And see how that looks. See the difference in them. Looks nice. Makes it look antique because there's more opalescent um, glitter in this. The other is more of a straight silver. This has more of the purples and greens in it. Looks kind of old-fashioned and pretty. So these might take a little bit to dry. The craft twinkles tend to take a little bit to dry. I would let them go several hours or overnight before we put on our rhinestones. That's the last thing we're going to do. There, we're done with that. And the last thing, the last step, we're going to put some hot fix rhinestones on our pieces. And they're going to look really nice. And we're going to put a little bit of a trim. I put the foofy one, really goes with the non antiqued one, with the Victorian one. And I put the braid with the Acru colored pearls on it. On the antiqued one and it looked really nice but the foofy looks you could see the foofy and it looks nice so I'll show you how to put on the rhinestones and then we'll be pretty much done so the rest is lacing up and gluing on your trim and then we're good to go so one more segment and we'll be done thanks Okay, we're ready to start our last segment, our last video segment, and all our paint is dry, and our skates look really cool. And what we're going to do now is add some hot fixed rhinestones. And for those of you who haven't used hot fixed rhinestones, they're awesome. You're going to never want to go back to gluing them. Um, what they are are little rhinestones that have glue on the back. They're black, they look black on the back, but actually they're not, um, when the glue dries, you don't see it, it's clear. And you use what looks like a wood burning tool. It's a heat gun, or a heat, heat wand, I guess, a wand you'd call it. And you touch the top of the rhinestone and um, it, the heat transfers from the glass to the rhinestone and it melts the glue and it puts them in place and the glue is really amazing. They can be used on fabric, they can be used on any surface, porous surfaces, non-porous surfaces and the glue I find is excellent. And I used to have trouble with um, gluing them in place because the glue would get so messy you'd see it all over no matter how you dotted it on or that it would be a mess and you would wind up having glue on the shiny surface it would dull your rhinestones um these are all crystals they're not um plastic so they're going to look better as well and the heat tool comes with a bunch of little tips that are nice so you could do different sizes, they just screw on. I'm not going to do it because mine's heating up right now. Um, and they have little cupped edges and they kind of hold the rhinestone in place. But I use mostly small rhinestones and I find that even the small tips, they tend to grab the rhinestone in there. And sometimes they're more of a pain than worth because I don't like to keep changing them too if I go to different sizes, which I usually do. So unless I'm doing bigger rhinestones where I really want the heat to go around it, like over five millimeters, I just keep, it comes with a flat tip. And I keep the flat tip on there. So um, what we're going to do, since the lace pattern is somewhat random, I'm going to just glue random rhinestones on, on the pink skate. And I'm going to kind of follow along with the motif on the blue skate. And I'll show you how easy that is to do. And what I chose to do 
for the um, non-antique side, I use crystal or clear rhinestones. And for the antique side, I used Aurora Borealis, which have the, the multicolor shine to them, which looks really kind of nice and old-fashioned. And I get my rhinestones from um, Rhinestone Canada. They're online. They're out of um, British Columbia. And they deliver all over the world. It's a tiny little package that you get no matter how many you buy. So, I mean, it doesn't cost a lot. They, they usually put free shipping specials, too, if you order so much. And I find they have the best quality rhinestones that I've seen, but the prices are great, too. The heat tool is around $20, and you buy that once, of course, and you have it forever. And they have some starter kits. They have, you know, all kinds. They have pre um, pre made patterns that you could buy you should go to their site it's rhinestonecanada.ca it's in my pattern and on my links page and i could show you how i store mine i use one of these floss boxes and i do them by color and size they come in these little bags already marked so i just if i'm a rhinestone junkie as you could see I have every color under the sun and because I really like using them. So that makes it real easy and then I store my tool there. So and it's it's nice to hide from the significant others because they only look at this little box and they think, eh, it's not a lot. It doesn't take up a lot of room. So even a place like mine that I don't I have limited room, it works well. So I'm gonna clear this away. Of course, you're using heat, so you want to be you want to be careful with it. It does get really hot, and I've burned myself on it, and it's no fun. It's like a glue gun, I guess. What I like to do, I'm going to use a three millimeter rhinestones, pretty much for most of the design. The four millimeter is only going to be for the center of the um, snowflakes, so. This motif had dots throughout it, so what I decided to do was put a rhinestone on every dot, and you just place it on with the tweezers. I like these bent tweezers. They're about the best, because you can really see. And you hold the gun, or the wand, and these are three millimeters, so I count to about 10. And that's it. It's on. You can see very slightly the glue starts to ooze out. I should put them on this side because I'm right-handed. That'll be easier for me to grab them. You could place a couple at a time if you want. And you just Hold it into place, and you could. See, the nice thing is it kind of moves around. You can see it kind of squish once the uh, once the glue melts. So you can kind of adjust your placement. If you find like if you're lining them up and they're not quite perfect, you just reheat them and kind of shove them over. I'm trying. Mine slips off because you sh you should hold it pretty perpendicular, and I'm going a little sideways so the camera can see it. But you get the hang of it. I'll do one motif and I won't trouble you with everything else. Because I mean, it's like watching paint dry after a while. But I just want you to get the idea how quick it is. And if they don't stick on, if you don't get them melted enough like the bigger ones if you're used to using the little ones you gotta really kind of be patient with the bigger ones i do them when i'm watching movies because it takes a little bit longer for the heat to transfer through them and they're dry almost immediately as soon as they cool i always kind of rub them with my finger and see you can't really even pick them off and as anything they're gonna hold only as strong as 
what is under it. So that's why I wanted to let the paint cure overnight, at least to get a harder cure. And you don't want to handle it too much until the paint cures completely. Because, of course, if the paint peels off, you know, from it, then the rhinestone will come off with it. So I'll do the one motif. I mean, there's no mess. There's no mussing with glue. There's no oozing out. All those nasty things that we don't like. They can go on Christmas ornaments. They can go on round glass ornaments. They're great with Margot's mud. I know she uses the stick-on ones to guide you, and that's cool too. But I like these because I don't like, I don't know the clear paper or a sticky thing in between. But these kind of go on after. So there. And you would just continue around. See, I did the little dots. I don't know if you can see them on the camera, but there's little dots in between the motifs. And what I did then on the snowflakes was... I didn't do where the little tiny hole is, but I did all the other um, little arms of the snowflakes. So I used a three millimeter there on each of these. See now it's heated up so it's going a lot faster. Like I said, you'll get the hang of it. I find that, especially when you use the um, Glamour Dust or Craft Twinkles, which I often do. We all know they take a little bit longer to dry than normal acrylic paint. They're a bit sticky. So you want to be sure that they're pretty well set or else you're going to you know, lose your stones. But what's nice, if one, if one pops off, just... You could easily add another, you know, as long as you have the same size. And they come, they come by the gross. And they're only a couple dollars of gross, depending on the size, but they're, they're amazingly inexpensive. And the quality is beautiful. They have a DMC quality, and they have a, um, I think Korean they call it, which is not as high quality as DMC. And both colors are, both of them have different colors. Some don't have one color and some don't have another. And honestly, I really can't tell the difference between the two. So I usually get the Korean ones when, um, when possible. And if they don't have a certain color, then I'll get the little ones, the more expensive DMC brand of them. But Linda, the owner, is very wonderful she's so nice and sweet and easy to work with so, there we go it's done and i did them all i i did the other side of them so you wouldn't have to watch me do my camera but i use this, the three millimeters on the ends and the four millimeters in the middle and I'm missing my little antique snowflake since last night, so the cats were probably playing hockey with it. But um, there will be six, and then we're going to use just wire. The, the only thing left to do on your skate is find some nice ribbon for lacing. I thought this was pretty. It's an organza with a woven edge with a satin edge. And I found, like I showed before, <clears throat> an acro color for the antique one. And I, I use this fluff for the non-antique one. And I have silver wire that I just went through and put it through the hole and kind of curled it around the toothpick. And it holds them on and you can pose them and they look really kind of nice. And you can set them up or hang them up if they're thinner. When I sell the kit for the um, skates, you get the two skates, 
and six snowflakes and your wire. So you get to, you can pick your embellishments and your rhinestones and stuff like that. So that's about it on our play date. Um, I hope you enjoyed doing the project with me. And if you have any questions, as I said, you can contact me anytime at the email SheilaLandryDesigns at gmail.com or you can call me, my phone number's on the pattern, or just let me know, email me, snail mail me, um, if you need any of the supplies or any other information or have any, any concerns about, you know, the products that I showed, then let me know. And I want to thank you all for enjoying this fun play date with me. And I hope to hear from you. Thank you.